Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is another trying to fix video and this time we're trying to fix another DAB radio. So this is the fourth one I've done now in this job lot. There's ten of them all together but some of them are definitely working. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Each one is throwing up a variety of different faults. So this one here should be an interesting one because this is a shower proof radio. It's currently for sale in John Lewis for 50 UK pounds, so it's a modern product. And uh, yeah, with this one, it's completely dead. So it says on the instructions to press the bottom half of the speaker to turn it on. And you can hear it's kind of clicking in, but yet there's nothing happening up here. But yet, when I plug it in, it is actually it is actually lighting up. And as well as that, it's syncing up with the time as well. So it's just a USB. It's got a rechargeable battery in it. I think it said it lasts, I think it was 12 hours or eight hours, something like that. Have a look there now. Welcome to DAB radio, uh, Digital Radio. And watch this now, it will come up with the correct time. See that that is the correct time with the correct date. And as well as that, it's charging. But I had this plugged in for probably about six hours earlier and yet it's still charging, which is a little bit weird. But yet when I plug it into the meter here, it is showing, it is registering that it is charging. Look, can you see there? 0.30, yeah, so obviously it's not drawing much, but maybe it doesn't draw much anyway. So let's take it apart and see what's happening. I think the awkward thing is, is how do we actually take this thing apart? Because I can't see any obvious way to get into it. If I do this, the idea is you're supposed to undo this, hook it around the pipes in the shower, and then you can do it up again. Or, for example, you can carry this around with you when you're outside and stuff. It's supposed to be waterproof. I can't remember what the rating is. You're not supposed to submerge it under a bath, but it's fine to be in a shower. Obviously, not when you're charging it. As soon as this is undone, it's not waterproof anymore. But the only screw I can find is this screw here. So I'm going to start with that. But I really don't know how you're supposed to get this apart because everything is uh, everything's sealed. There's two holes in here, but I think that's just to let maybe moisture, condensation or something drip out from the bottom. So I don't know how I'm supposed to get this off unless you unclip the lid. I don't know. So I've got a feeling the biggest challenge here will be actually getting the thing apart. So right now I'm not sure whether it's a problem with the on and off switch or if it's a problem with the battery because it's completely dead. The only time we have life is when we plug the power supply into it. So it could be a problem with the battery. So maybe the on and off switch is working but the battery is completely dead so it's got no life in it. So it's going to be quite interesting to take apart to see what's uh, what's happening. Let me start by undoing that and then we'll take it from there. Okay, well when I move that out there I can see that little brass screw moving a bit. Can you see when I put pressure on it here? That, that brass screw is moving across so maybe I'll just have to force it out. I'm going to get a little pry tool and just press in these things here and see if that does anything. I wonder do you have to pry this off at the side? It's going to be one of these things where as soon as it breaks open it's going to be really obvious, but right now it's uh, far from obvious. Okay, that made a little bit of progress there. There we go. Okay, so it unclips. It's like clipped in. It looks like that's going to break now, doesn't it? Right, uh, I think rather than do... Okay, that's going to... Oh, okay. Well, that side there hasn't broken, but that side has. Can you see there? So if I was doing that again, I said, well, you can see how hard it is. I suppose you've got to squeeze it in and take it out, but that's still going to be very hard to take out without breaking that. Maybe I can pop, pop a bit of glue in there to seal it afterwards. But yeah, look, there's another screw here. Oh, OK, and you can see it looks rusty. Oh, look, so the aerial, that's clever. The aerial is this, isn't it? 
Yes it is, the aerial, the wire goes up into here. So this must be acting as the aerial. Oh, that's kind of nice, that reminds me of the old Sony, uh, the Sony Watchman, the one that you hang around your neck, like the exercise one, and the cord that you hang around your neck is the actual aerial. I'm going to get that because nobody's going to know what I'm talking about. Yeah, this one here. See the Sony Watchman, so you can exercise and watch TV at the same time. Well, you could when it was an analog signal. And this cord around here does just look like a heavy duty thing you wrap around your neck, but it's not. This is the actual aerial. There's a wire going in here. Yeah, so it's just like that. There we go. Excellent. Right, so we can leave that on there, that's fine. We've got the buttons here, they all look fine, they just press down on those little posts. We've got this massive one here, and have a look. We've got some sort of little pressure thing here, so the idea is that that hits against here, and there's a little switch, listen. So we should be able to test that. Oh, well I didn't think I'd be able to get into that so easy, so the only thing I did a little bit wrong was here, but I think even if I did that again, I think that would probably break next time as well. Actually, do you know what? Because that is so rusty there, that bit and also the screw as well, surely that's actually going to affect how well the aerial works, because that's going to be making a bad contact against one of these brass things. Probably this one here with the rust on it. Well, it is that one, isn't it? Yeah. And these are the other buttons up the top here. Right, so now let's see if this is going to come apart. I think it's just stick. I think it, oh, it's just stuck. It was just stuck on that tape there. That should be over that way. Right, we have now, there we go, oh, look at that, yuck. Okay, well I reckon it's going to be the switch down the bottom, what do you think? So where's the battery? Oh, there's the battery at the back. At least the battery's quite high up. So we should be able to measure, should we, do, should we measure voltage on the batteries to begin with? Let's do that, then we know. So it's a 3.7 volt battery because it's, uh, it said so in the instructions, but it's lithium. So let's get our multimeter and let's measure the battery. So looking at the corrosion at the bottom, I'm pretty sure now it is going to be a problem with the switch. So here we go, black to black, and red to red, we're on DC. So it should be 3.7 or 3.8, 3.9, 4 volts, 4.1. So there you go, that's, uh, that's fully charging at 4.1. So the battery is okay, which is good. So I think we should just turn all our attention to this switch at the bottom here. And uh, what else now? So we've got a bit of corrosion around there, but I'm not sure if that's... I don't know whether that came from the factory like that or whether that is actual water damage. It looks a little bit crusty. It could be water damage. We can clean that up anyway. So this is the this is the power one here. Let's pull that one out. In fact, we don't really have to pull anything out because I'm pretty sure it's going to be here. So let's. Uh, what we'll do is now I can feel at the bottom the switch there. So let's put our meter to continuity. Go across these two probes here, and then press the button. And if it beeps it means then that the switch is actually okay. Right, so you can see it's not beeping. I'm just going to go across the top of the switch just to make sure that I am actually on the metal. No. Okay, so it's not turning on because the switch is not working because it's completely corroded. So let's undo it.
and let's see if it can be fixed or not. Right, okay, so they have sealed it all up with like this silicon. But I'll tell you what, let's just get rid of the rust just to begin with, just so I'm not so it's not all over my hands. I can worry about cleaning this at the very, very end. So if I was just to short these two together here, it should work when we uh in fact should we quickly do that? So this is the this is the battery here. So if I was to put my tweezers in here it should come to life there you go can you see it's gone blue there you go heart UK sorry you can't see because I'm zoomed in yeah playing but right, we can't hear anything the volume might well be down here let's see if I can just turn this there you go excellent so 100% now we know it is the switch now how do you turn it off There you go, you just tap it again. So tap to turn on and tap to turn off. Right, let's get some IPA, start cleaning up this, and then we'll have a closer look at it. It all looks pretty sealed, so it might be a hard one to fix. It's weird, out of all the fix-it tools, this is by far the best. I tend to use this on nearly every single video. Well, apart from a screwdriver set. Right, just to begin with, I probably will have to take it completely apart, but I am just going to douse it with alcohol, just in case it is just a little bit of corrosion. Right, so we still haven't got anything, I'm just on the leads here. So I think with this one I probably will have to take it apart. So first of all, let's get rid of all the gunk from it. And let's see what we're left with underneath. Right, luckily with this one it looks like you can just prise it open. So uh, let's do that. There we go. Yeah. Oh, good, okay. Oh, this is interesting. This doesn't look bad at all. There's no corrosion in that whatsoever. So why is this not working? Is it a problem with the actual solder joints? Let's zoom right in. All right, look. Can you see there? They look perfect in there. Do you remember from the second video I did? Where the on and off switch was faulty, the outer ones were corroded. This isn't corroded whatsoever. So when we're doing that, that should. This clicking nicely. That sh there's no reason why that shouldn't work. So that makes me think that. That makes me think that there's no continuity between the edges and these ones here. So let's get our meter onto continuity again. Let's see if it's getting to here. Yes, and we've got the black wire here, which is getting to here. Yes, so now is the black wire going from here to here? No. Is the red wire going from there to there? No. So, oh, look at that, the outer one is actually on the red one. Right, so the outer one's on the red one. So it should be going all the way up to here then, which it is. Why wasn't it doing that a minute ago? I guess I was testing the wrong one. But yet the black side, so the black one's actually going to the middle. So the black one's getting to there, but we haven't got continuity to the middle there. So if I go on to there, which should have continuity up here. Oh, we have there. And oh, now we've got it.
Wow, but we haven't got it between there and there, so it's a fault on that tiny bit of circuit board. Let me zoom right in. So look, although it looks perfect, check this out. So we've got continuity between here and here, because it's on the same trace. That then travels, look, just along here to here. But yet there's no continuity between there and there. Why? Where is the brake? I can't see any brake. Yeah, look. Right, I'm going to have to scrape this back and see what's going on. Has it just been eaten through completely? There you go. Oh no, sorry, I was looking at that. Yeah, it's gone here, isn't it? That's the circuit board there. So look, we've got a little bit of copper here. So look, it's just completely eroded away here. So I suppose water sat there because this was at the bottom, wasn't it? Let me just double check that. Yeah, this was sat right at the bottom because it was like, it was like that there. So when you spin it round, you can see water's just been sat at the very bottom and it's just eventually eating its way through the copper. So it wasn't the switch at all. It's the fact that the circuit board's dead between here and here, yeah? You see, there's nothing there. So we've got it going to here and that's the last place. And then look, there's nothing there. Right, so we're going to just have to run a wire from here to here and then close up the switch and try to cover it in gunk again. Oh, there is a little rubber gasket. I was going to say, why is there no gasket? There is. There's a rubber gasket here. So if that's on there, no water should have gotten in the inside of it. Hmm. So what I was going to suggest is making a hole here to let the water drain away. But if it was done up properly, then no water should have been getting into it. Yeah. Okay, well look, we'll fix it and then uh, wipe it up. I mean, maybe it's a common problem or maybe this was angled a certain way where water was getting in through. I don't know how water would have got into it. But then again, look, it depends. It could have been under the flow of water for ages. Water does tend to, to get into uh, most places, doesn't it, eventually. this switch back together I don't need to add any deoxy or anything because it's all it's all perfect so I've got to make sure I put it in with the dome with the point facing up so that it clicks down like that now that one there and it was a dull side up There we go. That's gone back together nicely. So now let's test it now and see if the meter beeps when we press that button. Here we go. Perfect. So now what I have to do is put some solder mask on there, the UV stuff, put the light on it, the UV light, let it go hard and then I need to look into getting some kind of mastic to cover it all up again so the same thing doesn't happen all over again but you can see all I've done is just on a very crude wire between there and there the insulation's come off with all the burning off it so uh, but what I'll do is I'll cover the whole thing in solder mask and mastic so it should be as waterproof as it ever was
Right, so I've covered it there in the green solder mask. So there's no more copper showing. So now what I have to do is just shine the light on it and let it do its thing. So what I'm going to do now is get some wet wipes and just clean up in here, get some IPA and get rid of the corrosion around here as well. Now I've had a look in the house, unfortunately I haven't got any mastic. Well I had, but it's gone rock hard because it hasn't been used in a few months and unfortunately it doesn't matter how well you seal the top, it always just seems to go off for me. What I have got though is this all weather adhesive. So I know it's not mastic. What I call mastic is basically silicon, the stuff you put around the baths and the sinks. Uh, I know this doesn't behave, it's not going to be as good in this instance as using silicon, the mastic but I think it will still do its job because it's an adhesive I'm going to be basically putting adhesive from here onto the plastic here and I'm hoping then that will make it waterproof this stuff bonds in the wet it goes up to 100 degrees and it goes down as low as minus 40 it's pretty much it pretty much does what it says it sticks like you know what so um, I'm thinking that that will hopefully keep the water off the board if I cover the bottom of this in it. I think it will probably do its job. So uh, let's get started on that. I'm just going to clean up this little connector here as well, get it back to silver rather than this white chalky stuff. Right, so I've got rid of near enough all the rust from in there. I've cleaned up that little aerial washer thing there and I've also cleaned up the screw that goes through it and I've cleaned up the screws that hold this in as well. So this has now gone nice and hard. So what I'm going to do is put some of this stuff around this area here and then put a load on the back as well and hopefully that will keep it waterproof. Right, okay, you can see I've completely flooded the top of it there so there's no way that water should be able to work its way through. And I'm going to put it in here and I'm actually going to do the same on the back as well. It's going to be a nightmare to take off again if it needs to come off again in the future. You can still hear it clicking. So now I'm going to cover up the top as well. Right, so if water does work its way in there now, you can see that really it shouldn't be able to get anywhere near that switch. So I'm going to close this all back up now. I'm going to make sure that this rubber gasket is in its home. And of course I need to put this back in, don't I? now so let's hit the button at the back and see if it livens up yeah there you go and it shows a full battery as well and press it again and it goes off all right so let's uh, pop this back together and I have to do up the screws yep that's gonna work now I'm gonna use the newest screw on the other side now and the slightly corroded one on this side here because this isn't connecting to anything.
Yeah, not too bad. It's a bit loose on that side. Uh, yeah, that's broken there. I suppose I could add a little bit. I suppose I could add a little bit of this, couldn't I? And just pop it in there. That's going to hold it. And it's not ideal. Even if I was to do another one of these, I don't think. I think that would break again when I was when I would take it off. So by doing things like that, it's certainly making it much harder for the next person to take apart. But realistically, something like this is not going to be getting repaired over and over again. It's not exactly like a car. The last thing I have to do is clean it up now and also I'm going to see if I can get rid of any of these red marks. So apparently what I was told by numerous people in the last video was that if I use, I think it was called a dry erase pen. Now I've never heard of a dry erase pen, but when I looked it up, a lot of people were saying that it is basically a white board marker. So when I, sorry, when I say a lot of people, Google was saying it is a, a white board marker. So I do have a white board marker, and I think it's supposed to kind of react with the permanent marker. And then if you do that and rub it over, then use IPA, you're supposed to have more chance of it coming off. So look, I've got nothing to lose. It looks a mess here anyway. So let's give it a go. So here we have a board marker here. So this is uh, one that you rub on a whiteboard and it rubs straight off again. Given that pretty good cover in there. Not sure if you're supposed to let it dry or not. Just get the hot air on it for a second. Right now, let's use some IPA. No, nah, still there. I think the problem I've got is that it, uh, it, it because it's rubberized, it's not like normal plastic. I presume it's it's more likely that the permanent marker is going to really stick in there. So I don't really think there's anything I can do about this. Again, I can see the S from the John Lewis just working its way off again. So all that's probably going to happen is I'll end up wearing away the rubberized coating like I did on the the first one that I did. I'll give it another go. No, I don't think that's going to bring it off. I think what will happen is the John Lewis will disappear and I'll still be left with a stain there. Right, I, what I don't want to do is I don't want to do it like last time where I end up with the rubberized coating worn off it. I think I'd rather it like that. I mean, what I could do is I could actually get a permanent marker and I could just section off a bit of here with masking tape and colour it in. I wonder would that be a better job? You know what I mean? If I was to get a Sharpie and actually do a neat one. In fact, I'm going to do that and then it will look more like the design. I think that would be a better job. Now, I'm not saying the dry erase doesn't work. I don't know if this is a dry eraser. It could be something completely different. I just did a quick Google search on it. I didn't watch any YouTube videos or anything like that. Right, let's do the uh, masking tape and the Sharpie option. Well, I found an orange Sharpie here and I've just touched it up here just quickly and it looks to be exactly the same colour, so I think that's going to be a bit of a winner. Well, I think I'm going to take that off when it's still wet. This might be quite satisfying. No, that looks awful, 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 awful. Oh god, what a mess. What a mess, it's just leaked underneath it. Right, what I need for that is some kind of painter's tape, some kind of frog tape, I think. Let's see if I've got any. 
Oh, let's see if I have more success with this. This is reminding me of one of those things that starts off small and gets worse and worse. You know, like the the watch that I did. The Amiga watch. Where I destroyed the dial. So now I'm going to have to go bigger. And if I mess it up this time, it's going to be game over. Because I'll have to end up doing the whole thing orange. Well, I'm hoping that's going to give me a better, better joint. Right, let's go for it again. Right, maybe I should take this off when it's dry. Right, let's give it a go. <laughs> no, it still didn't work. Nah, it just keeps leaking. It must be because it's rubber. It just looks rubbish. Do you know what, that even looks worse than it did before. I tell you why, at least before it just looked like a scribble. Now it looks like somebody's actually tried to repair it. Doesn't look as doesn't look as honest now. Uh, oh, what do I do? Do I try to do it freehand? Or do I just give up? Uh, it really does stain in there. Gonna see if I can just scrape away a little bit to make it a bit straighter. Actually this is working. Well, there we go, that does actually look a bit better than it did before. Look. So it's still... <laughs> well, you know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not pretending it looks good. But, I suppose, does it look better than the scribble? So I was editing up this video, it's three in the morning here in the UK, and... Uh, my eyes just kept being drawn to this I couldn't every time I looked at the radio all I seen was the orange splodge in the corner here so I got the sandpaper to it to get rid of it and I'm so much happier look how much better it looks now so you can see where it goes from smooth to rubberized there you go you can see it perfectly now but that looks so much better because now it just looks like wear rather than something that's been bodged up it's kind of weird like with a car if there's a scratch on it, I don't mind too much, but if that scratch has been touched up badly, then it really annoys me. I'd much rather just the honest scratch so you can see that, okay, this is what's happened to it. But when it's had a bit of filler and a bit of this and a bit of that, of course, if it's done professionally, it will look fine. But you know when it's just been touched up at home and it doesn't look right, it really annoys me. And that's what that kept reminding me of. So now I'm happy with it because, yes, it doesn't say John Lewis anymore, but your eye's not drawn to it, even when you're pretty close. And even if you do see it under, for example, a spotlight shining down on it, all you're going to think is that it's just had a bit of wear in that corner. So I think it looks much better than it did before. Even though it doesn't say John Lewis, it still says John Lewis at the back here. So uh, it is still 
what it is. So this time I will finish the video for good. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.